DITP, Thailand's trade link to Africa. The province of Chiang Mai, with its cooling mist-shrouded mountains with dense jungle and subtropical conditions, favors the production of cool season crops almost all year round. New species are continuously introduced for their high production potential and superior characteristics. These not only earn farmers more, but provide the food industry with an even wider range of raw materials. This mountainous province's big success story is the agricultural projects run by the Royal Project Foundation of Thailand. It was initiated by His Majesty King Bhumibol after he saw firsthand the destruction of deforestation by poor hill tribes living among the mountainous borders with Myanmar and Laos to grow opium. He thought that there might be some crop that can grow there and can make Bolu more than opium. When King Bumibo came to power in 1946, he traveled extensively throughout the country to see for himself how people were living and what could be done to improve their circumstances. He brought in a hub of researchers to identify temporary crops that farmers could grow to provide a better income in the place of opium. That means that we bring the benefit to the entire nation. Beside the uh, uh, no opium, and the, the low, low, lowland people, people in Bangkok, can have temperate crop. Uh, formerly, we have to order from abroad, but right now, many, many products, they do not all, uh, import anymore. I see the farmer, they are happy because they don't have a problem, they have money, the quality is better than the past. I think that this is my certification. Mm -hmm. King Bumibol is widely venerated for his leadership and tireless efforts to promote rural development and to improve the lives of the poor. He has been involved in countless social and economic development projects, many of which he personally funded. King Bumibol is also credited with a social economic theory of self-sufficiency, a holistic and sustainable approach that stresses the principles of moderation, reasonableness and resilience to change. It is under his leadership that subsistence farming was converted into self-sufficient and profitable businesses. In 2006, on the 60th anniversary of his accession to the throne, he received the UN Human Development Lifetime Achievement Award for his extraordinary contribution to human development. This project has been 42 years in the making. Now more than 172,000 people farm in accordance with international certification and export standards, like Europe Gap. Farmers are also slowly changing to better farming methods. The rain comes uh, in winter seasons. We cannot control the, the climate, so we try to study about uh, how to brew the, the suitable greenhouse for the farmer and how to reduce the cost, production cost for the farmer when we use the high technology or advanced technologies. In the meantime, they are starting to reforest the area with indigenous plants. Environmental management is seen as key to the project's sustainability. Indigenous trees are planted amongst the regular crops and in a few years this area will look like it did a century ago and production, which is being moved into hothouses, is expected to double. By 2016, the global fresh produce market is predicted to be worth around 2.6 billion US dollars with a volume of over 800 million tons. The Asia-Pacific region is by far the biggest producer and is steadily increasing its market share thanks to a growing middle class and a better understanding of the benefits of healthy eating. And with at least 80% of raw materials sourced locally, Thailand is a natural base to produce seasonings, flavorings, and food ingredients. Right now, I think probably the challenge is that we have to manage the whole chain, the whole value chain, from raw material to consumer, and make it a seamless connection. That probably that's the key, that's the challenge that we are, we are working on. 
In 2010, the country exported nearly 400,000 tons of ready-to-eat food and food ingredients valued at 822 million US dollars. Sauces and curries are experiencing particular success in overseas markets. Their share of the health food market, particularly nuts, fruit snacks, products without MSG or preservatives, low-fat or low-calorie foods, vegetarian foods and foods with all natural ingredients, is expected to increase rapidly. The area's transformation is at the heart of a proposed food corridor linking Thailand with its neighbours. The second phase will see infrastructure established such as transport and logistics. Right now, since we have what they call ASEAN in a community in the year 2015, a lot of food industry in Thailand has expanded because uh, we want uh, to uh, expand our uh, food production and also uh, wants ASEAN people to get to know more about Thai food. So I think that uh, a lot of uh, food industries here towards to that. Fruit thrives in the lush tropical climate of Thailand. Custard and rose apple, dragon fruit, mango steam, rambutan and longan, which is part of the lychee family, and the exotic and expensive durian, regarded by many as the king of fruits. Hidden under a thick, spiky skin and an offensive smell when cut, lies a large, sweet flesh with a creamy taste that reminds of custard. It is one of the country's most sought-after fruit exports. No less than 20 different banana varieties are grown throughout the country, each known by its local name. Sweetest among all export fruit is the pineapple, a fruit most suited to processing. Thailand satisfies almost half of the global demand for processed pineapple and is the only country in the world where pineapples are grown throughout the country. But if it's tuna in a can or frozen shrimp, chances are pretty good it comes from Thailand. With a coastline of almost 3,000 kilometers, the eastern seaboard is the heartland of Thailand's seafood industry. It is the biggest earner at almost half of total food exports. The fish processing industry has grown significantly over the past two decades, especially freezing and canning in support of export growth. About half of all canned tuna that is globally consumed is processed in Thailand. Its 30 canners have a combined processing capacity of 3,000 tonnes per day. The country also imports significant quantities of fresh, chilled and frozen tuna for processing and re-export. And demand is increasing because it is affordable, convenient and healthy. Tuna is high in protein, low in fat and packed with heart-healthy omega-3. Future growth is predicted to come from Latin America, Russia and South Africa. In the old days, we, we pack in simple products like tuna, a canned tuna. When we started, we have our own fish in our sea. So it's very good. So we just pack it. And then when the customer come in, then we sell it to them under their own, under the customer brand. But then the business grows so fast and so much that we don't have enough fish anymore. So we have to import the fish to supplement our own raw material. The upswing in the Thai tuna canning industry came about because of a number of reasons. It was able to achieve economies of scale, processing plants are in close proximity to major fishing grounds, canning factories are highly productive at relatively low labour cost, and manufacturers have access to major canned tuna markets such as the US and EU. 
In 2010, Thailand strengthened its foothold in the industry when its biggest processor, Thai Union Frozen Products, bought EU canned seafood giant MW Products for 680 million euros. The deal included processing facilities in Europe, Ghana and the Seychelles, plus four European canned tuna brands. We own that brand, so now we pack for ourselves, that company packed for themselves under their own brand and sell in the international market. The purchase gives Thai Union the leading position in five European countries. Five new fishing vessels have given the company even greater access to raw materials and offshore processing bases. Considerable effort is also being channeled into value-added product development and more innovative packaging. We develop new products, uh, more than 250 products. We have a big group of R&D people try to develop a new product and then we can, we can provide all new products to our customer. In our group, we, have the, we produce the can by ourselves. We have the printing label by ourselves. One of the major challenges facing the canning industry worldwide is the decline in tuna populations. Thailand's two biggest canners are members of the International Seafood Sustainability Foundation, which tries to manage the long-term conservation and sustainable use of tuna stocks. We need to have raw material, so if the tuna is can go, and uh, between the supply and demand is uh, balanced, that is good for our business in the future, that if we can, uh, we can have more fish in the future, we have to follow with the regulation and that's one.